It's Power Back Time on the Gutsy Podcast. Each episode brings you five minutes of condensed inspiration to reclaim the courage and momentum you've unintentionally given away. You've got big things to do, so let's get your power back. Earlier this week, we talked about creating and growing your own coaching business. And one of the most powerful things that you can do in life, in business, in your career, in your relationships is to allow yourself to be yourself. But the world has taught you otherwise, hasn't it? If you don't speak up enough, you're standoffish and shy and non-approachable. If you speak up, though, and you use your most bold, authentic voice to express a thought, feeling, emotion, or something you stand up for, then you're too loud, you're too much, and people want you to shut up. Living in a world full of shoulds and expectations, it's very easy to forget who you actually are and what you truly want in this world. It's easy to dim the parts of you that make you exactly who you are, to stop exploring to lower your standards, to silence your curiosity, because it makes other people uncomfortable. And when other people's thoughts, feelings, and expectations get in our own brain hole, we start to make them our own. That's why today's Power Back is about re-embodying and rediscovering who you are and allowing yourself to be your truest self. One of the most powerful things that I could ever, ever, ever teach you is this. When you spend your life abiding by other people's rules, living by their expectations, and wanting and needing to please them, you will forever and always continue to let yourself down. By the way, if you're enjoying the content that you're receiving on the Gutsy Podcast, I encourage you to follow me on TikTok. I'm on there every single day sharing nuggets of wisdom to help plant a seed in your brain hole that's going to grow over time, that's going to give you this aha moment. I love nothing more than to watch you have that shining second when like everything fucking makes sense, everything starts to align, and it gives you the encouragement and the empowerment to take your right next step for you. So I am at that Laura Aura. I'm on TikTok. Lots of nuggets of wisdom over there. So give me a follow and let me know that you found me on the Gutsy Podcast. All right. So here's my first question for you today. When is the last time that you allowed yourself to be yourself? Now, this is the person that you are when no one's looking. This is the version of you that sings loudly and dresses boldly and speaks up and has an opinion and has this like fiery passion inside of you. This is the part of you that has a big idea and wants to go for it. The side of you that's like, I don't really know how this is all going to work, but I'm, I'm excited and ready to take a risk. This is the part of you that allows yourself to rest and refuel and do things that fill your mind, body, and your soul. What I hear and see more often than not are that women are living in this created, molded version of themselves. Like when you were born, you were born as you. You had no preconceived thoughts or feelings. You didn't know how to be or how not to be. You simply were. And then as life has gone on, the expectations of parents and friends and society and patriarchal bullshit, like all of these weights get put on top of you. And even though they're heavy, you continue to carry them because that seemingly feels easier. This is how you should do things. Here is the expected timeline that you should do things in. And let's not forget the millions of people that have incredibly loud opinions about how you do it. So I get it. It feels easier to just sit down, shut up, and go with the flow because there's not a lot of resistance there and you become what everybody needs you to be. The flip side to that coin, however, is that you are not living in your most authentic self. There's something inside of you that you know that there is more for you. You feel that urge to step out. You feel that voice boiling up and wanting to express yourself in the way that like, oh, I have something to say. You want to ask for better pay. You want to speak up to a friend that's been doing something that's not in alignment with your friendship. You want to start your business or expand it or completely change the way that you're doing things. 
you want to be the one that's out on the dance floor dancing when there's a wedding. And you know that voice inside of you better than anybody else that's like, no, I don't want to do that before your actual outward voice says, yes, I do. Through all of this shit that's happening around you, it is so easy to forget who you are and what you want. And today I'm here to challenge you to start taking your power back, to start allowing yourself to be that version of yourself, to start saying what you want to say, showing up the way that you want to show up, and making decisions that are in alignment with you, not when everyone else expects you to decide. Now, here's the top thing that I hear because you're saying, Laura, okay, I hear you. That all sounds great, but I don't even know where to start. Listen, the top two things that I hear from women is, I don't even know who I am anymore, and I don't even know where to begin. And those are fair statements. Look, if you have been living inside of this created box for years or decades, it's pretty easy to say like, okay, I've been doing things a certain way for so long that I don't even know how to do it differently. I don't even know what I want. And where do I begin? So let's answer those questions. You're not going to like the first one, most likely, because most people don't. But this is a really important part of this process that you have to do if you want to break this cycle. And that is to get very real with where you are unhappy in your life and in your business. Where are you pretending? Where are you putting on a facade or a show? Where are you forcing yourself to do things? And what things are draining the ever loving life out of you? A lot of times this looks like, well, yeah, you know, it works, but you know, I'm just trying to get through the day. I'm just getting by. Once this is done, I'll feel so much better. The very first thing that you must do is face and get very real with yourself about the things that are making you unhappy, because that's going to be the indicator of where your soul is like, hey, um, I'm still in here, but I kind of got shoved underneath the bed in this tiny little box. And if you're ready and then you're willing, I'd like to come out and play again. If you skip over this step, you will continue to be in this hamster wheel of searching for more and wondering and looking for quick fixes on the internet and asking a million people what to do and what would they do in this circumstance and just like constantly going outside of yourself for the answer. I realize that I am not the first person to say this to you, but maybe just maybe it will hit differently today. The answers that you are desperately trying to find are not on the outside, they are on the inside. And that starts with getting extremely raw, vulnerable, real with yourself. I know vulnerability is scary, right? If you heard that, you're like, I'm not saying you have to tell anybody yet, right? I'm not saying that you need to voice this. This isn't, this isn't a Facebook post. This is not like an outward thing. This is all an internal experiment of just leaning into the curiosity. Hmm. Let me think for a minute, what drains my energy? I haven't really thought about what makes me unhappy in a while. Let me play with that a little bit, right? Like this is the energy going into it, not sitting down and like forcing yourself like, well, I need to, no, that's more the energy that we're trying to remove, right? This energy is literally in the play and the curiosity and simple awareness of yourself. Because I'm going to bet if you've been living outside of yourself for a very long ass time, it's probably been a hot minute since you sat down with you. Another thing that you can do is to sit down and journal, write out, or just daydream about what would you actually do if time, money, and people were not a factor? How would you operate? How would you run your business? What risks would you take? What would you do differently in your life? How would you move and pivot and glide through this earth differently? Because a lot of times the things that stop you from doing the actual thing are those kind of bigger, chunky bits, time, money, and people. A lot of this worry, a lot of this holding yourself back almost always comes back to the worry of letting other people down. Maybe they've gotten used to a certain version of you. Maybe they lean on you for a lot of things. Like there's a lot of people pulling at you all the time. And I'm here to tell you and remind you very lovingly and very bluntly that you get to take care of those people way better when you are happy yourself. I think that there's this misconception that when you take care of yourself, you're like, fuck everybody else. They're on their own now. And that's so not what it is. Because leaning in and allowing yourself to truly be yourself 
allows you to be happy. And when you're happy, you get to show up for those people in such a more brilliant and powerful and helpful way. There's also a bit of a realization there when you're looking at the people in your life and are they taking advantage of you? Have you allowed them to take advantage of you? I don't think that it's always from a place of malice or like, oh, I want to take all of your energy away from you. I think people just get used to you showing up and saying yes. They get used to you doing things and then it just kind of becomes second nature. So some of this process is not only getting real with yourself, but then resetting healthy boundaries with the people in your life. And if that's the thing that's stopping you, then that's the thing that's stopping you. The next exercise that you can do is a little bit more fun than the other ones, perhaps. And that is asking yourself, what did you used to do that brought you a lot of joy and was a lot of fun that you stopped doing? One of my coaching clients always talks about how she used to dance all the time. Used to listen to her favorite music and just dance freely and openly. And it, like just it raised her energy and made her feel so much better in everything that she's doing. And over the years, through the weight of uh, roles and responsibilities and being a business owner and a mother and a spouse, she stopped dancing. So through our coaching sessions, we've re-explored that movement in her body and how much joy and value that brings to her life. So I ask you today. What's something that you used to do that brought you so much joy? These can be very simple things like the music that you listen to, moving your body, a walk that you used to take, or it can be the adventure side of you, traveling, seeing new places, trying new foods, might be painting or yoga, or I mean, there's a bajillion different things. What makes you happy is unique to you. Now, this is also not an exercise to go back on yourself and beat yourself up. Oh, that used to be so good for me and I stopped doing it. And so I fucked everything up. Look, that's what women like to do. They like to like rediscover things and then beat themselves up against the head. That's not what this exercise is about. This exercise is about rediscovering the things that once lit you up and giving yourself the opportunity to say, you know what, I'd like to do a little bit more of that, which leads me into the final tip for today. And that is the power back challenge, which is asking yourself, what is one thing I can do more like myself today? I know that you want everything to be fixed overnight. You want everything to be in order. You want everything to be expansive. You want the business to be the exact way you want it. You want all the relationships fixed. Like you want all of these things done overnight. And I can't really blame you. But the realization is Big changes come with small yeses. And where you decide to say yes to yourself, to allow yourself to be more of that natural part of you, is going to look very different for you than it is for the next person, than it is for me, and than it is for the person around the block. And that's the most powerful part of all this, right? Is your truest self is unique to you. And that's why trying to fit into everyone else's mold, trying to do things the way that everyone else does them, trying to fit in and dress the right way and talk the right way and market the right way and, and join all the right organizations and do all the things the right way may not be working because their right way may not be yours. And that's what all this boils back down to is acknowledging the different parts of your life and in your business where you have unintentionally given away yourself where you've molded and adapted and conformed and tightened and dimmed the light to make other people more comfortable. Imagine if some of the most brilliant artists, musicians, actors, doctors, uh, people, imagine how many things we would not have in this world if they continued to contain themselves, if they continued to conform. That's what it comes down to you as well. You have something magical to offer in this world. Your personality and your style and the space that you take up in this world is brilliant. And when you are in your truest form, showing up in this world as yourself and saying, you know what, I hear you, I understand you, but this is me. You shine brighter than anything. You have a greater impact than you ever realize. And the ripple effect Look, you never know who you are inspiring by being your truest self. You could be walking into a coffee shop and you're just feeling good. You're taking up the space that you know that you belong in. 
you're dressing the way you want to, and you're happy, you're radiating, you're communicating, like you just, you have an aura. Imagine that you have an aura. You will never understand the positive impact ripple that that has on the people around you. When you are in your own brilliance, your own authenticity, you shine brighter than anything that is possible. And not only is that empowering to other people, but it's self-empowering. Because when you feel good, you feel good. And the more that you allow yourself to, to say the small yeses, to take simple steps, to start infusing small things that used to make you excited or new things that you're curious about doing, your mood shifts. You walk differently. You carry yourself differently. You say bold yeses faster. And you can quickly, very quickly recognize when something is out of alignment, when something is trying to knock you off of your own version of center. And one of the most amazing parts of all of this is you start to hold yourself as a non-negotiable. If you've been feeling stuck, pulled in a hundred different directions, keep getting visions for something more and bigger in your life, and you find yourself just kind of scrambling all over the place, I can promise you that the answers are inside of you and that the current circumstance is nothing more than something you have gotten comfortable doing. And that's the hard pill to swallow because the current circumstance that you're in with all of this weight and all these expectations and all of these shoulds is because you've gotten used to it. It feels easier, but is it easier? It feels easy because you know how to navigate it. You've mastered it. You know the right ways to do. You know how to dodge and pivot. And it like keeps everybody at bay, keeps things simple, sit down and shut up. And that may feel easier in that moment. But this is your reminder that that is continuing in every relationship, in every aspect of your life, every day, every week, every month. So it might feel easier in the moment, but it's stretching out along a huge chunk of time. That is where your energy is going. That is where your focus is going. And this is your opportunity to change all of that. One of the most important things that I want to leave you with today is this. You don't need to know every single step every how, every when, every detail of this next part of your journey. All you have to do is be willing to take one next step. One step then leads to a second. A second leads to a third. And before you know it, you have created inspiration. You've created motivation. You've created momentum. And that momentum stacks one on top of the other. And I can promise you that when you truly start allowing yourself to come out, to be your truest self, it will become harder and harder and harder to keep that version of you contained. And rightfully fucking so, because you don't belong contained. You don't belong in a box. You don't belong tucked in a closet somewhere. You belong in the world. So I'll close this with one final question today. Are you willing to allow yourself to be yourself? Everything that you see, feel, desire, and dream about is on the other side of your answer. Guiding you to be your truest version of yourself is one of my greatest honors. And if you're interested in working together, go to lauraora.com. You can learn about the different programs and services that I can guide you along the way with. Next week on the Gutsy Podcast, episode 150 is about embracing your wild aliveness. This is a bountiful, energetic, beautiful conversation with Amanda Hansen. And this is an episode you're not going to want to miss. In the meantime, get social with me. You can find me on TikTok and Instagram using at that Laura Aura. And as always, until I see you next time, stay gutsy.